I know we on remote location, so we just gonna get a little ball hawk. Boom and bam, we back. So, hey, man, I appreciate you, man. I know you're a busy man, man, of many tasks. So I know uh, sometimes you got to do stuff from a remote, remote location. And today uh, you made time for the show. So I appreciate that. So thank you on behalf of all the fans out there in the Ball Hog Sports Show and the Big Flow Show fans out there in the world waiting for uh, Sports Freestyle Hot 16, Volume 15. 15. So, hey, next, next episode is going to be our golden joint. Hot 16, hot 16. That's going to be hot. 16. You, we got to do something like special. That. We got to do something special, man. I might pour some of that yak while we on the you, show. You we, no, I tell myself I'm not drinking this month, but that's a different show. That's a whole In February? You know, I thought that was January thing. You know, my birthday drinking. month, too. Ooh, we should do the hot 16 on February 16th, which is my birthday. And then I might drink. I don't know. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. I, I feel like you, you look. A lot of times in real time, creativity is golden. That was golden right there, man. Let's make it happen. I got to get the clock ready, man. Y'all know that it is. Your boy, B. Brown, ESQ, a.k.a. the Ball Hawk, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South from the Ball Hawk Sports Talk, chilling and doing our thing. Uh, Sports Freestyle Hot 16 with my man, Big Flow from the Big Flow Show. Let me get the what's clock. good, America? I forgot to give you all the what's good. My bad. America, America I love what's that. good. You know, I you got to speak when you enter the room, man. So I didn't, I didn't speak. You know, that's hate. What's I love good? that. When you say, what's good, America? What's good, America? We just, you know what I'm saying? I need sometimes you got to know what's going on, man. Every time. All right, so you ready? I got to hit I'm start. Ready, man. You ready to if, for those of you who've been under a rock, you don't realize what's going on. Let me look right into the camera. What's going on is uh, it's the Sports Freestyle Hot 16. Your boy, B. Brown, ESQ, a.k.a. The Ball Hawk, a.k.a. The Mouth of the South, from the Ball Hawk Sports Talk with your boy Big Flow from the Big Flow Show. We taking over America, and that's what it is. 16 minutes of that's that hot grease, that hot fire, that's hot fish more. grease. Hit, go. Let's rock. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. What's going on this weekend? We got the Super Bowl, man. We got the Super Bowl. Uh, I, oh, I didn't know you had a little oil. But anyway, you got the Super Bowl coming something. up this weekend, man. You know, it's the biggest weekend for us football fans. We got to look at it, man. What's your what's your football tradition for the Super Bowl? What what, what are we doing at the Brown household? Normally, yeah. I get crunk, man. I get real crunk. And what that means is I got a little bit of yak, and I got two individuals side by side. That's my oldest and my youngest son. We get into it. We watch football from a football lens. My oldest son, who is a quarterback, uh, hopefully they both will be a quarterback. But the oldest son has embraced the role of a quarterback. We we do a lot of X's and O's in terms of our conversation related to the game. I'm not a big commercial guy. Like during the commercials, we are normally talking about what they saw, the uh, situation in the game, what we think they're going to run next. Uh, I'm having football conversations with my with my Absolutely. aspiring football players during the football during the big game. How about yourself? You know, I st- this week. Uh, the wife is sick. She's she's out of town. She's on vacation. She's down your side of the country now that she's COVID free. So she, or she's I, close to the game. Then if she's, she's down close down, to the game now, she didn't even know the Super Bowl though. She didn't even know. So typically, we used to throw parties for years. I threw parties at clubs. I threw parties at the house. I used to have right. people come in town. Whatever. I've been a little bit lax last few years. You know, just kind of go where I'm invited. So. Uh, I got invited to a friend's house. We'll go hang out. But now my kids are cool. So I don't know. My son, he probably got something real cool to do. My daughter has a Super Bowl plans. She's going to a party. So, you know, I'm just hoping I can see it. You know, I got to ask you this. You got seven and nine, right? Seven and nine? The two kids? Uh, eight and ten now. Yep. Eight and ten. Eight and ten. They get older. Everything goes on in life. Everything yep. moves forward. So I'm just got to stay with it. Got to keep up. Does it bother you? Do you ever feel like the Super Bowl should get moved to Saturday or moved to a noon game? I mean, I always always get frustrated. My son wanna watch the game, whatever. You know, he was really little. And I guess 10 and 8 is a little bit different to hang out. But do you let them stay up for, to the whole game? The game's over? Uh, the latest, no, they do not. Uh, and I recall we were at, it was a, a hedge fund guy. We were at his house. That's kind of a, a, a name drop. No, I didn't, I didn't drop the name, so it's okay. It's okay. We were at a, a very prominent hedge fund guy. Know who you rub noses yeah, with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all mess around. I don't just I don't, I don't I don't just worry about 39. Now. I'm hanging with hedge fund. Folks. Hedge fund. Look, guys, listen, investors in my Future, yeah, she doesn't say you, you gotta do that, man. <laughs> we were at those off the hedge from the AMs, the uh, the GameStop guys. But we, we oh my gosh, yeah. anyway, yeah. But so we were at this gentleman's home and it was time to leave at halftime. And my mm-hmm. son just started bawling, crying. I feel like both the best and the worst parent because my son was really distraught about it. The my oldest son, who's really into the sport, 
Um, but yet and still, nah, we don't we don't let them stay for the whole game. That's what I'm saying. But Super Bowl's the half time. Why half don't time. they move it to Saturday? They should or noon. I like noon. Like noon. They, they, I, mean, they, they, I guess they, they want the nighttime and do whatever. But like then they like. Know, to, I, used to, I remember they used to watch the show time. 24, and the 24 would come on after the Super Bowl. Yeah. I'd be trying to rush to the house to go check it out. But I, I think they should make changes with that, man. They got to go do it. But, hey, whatever. Super Bowl Sunday, it is what it is. We're going to be there. My kids are old enough to stay up now, so I don't have to worry about it. But I was thinking about y'all. So what, what's your uh, what's your prediction, man? What are you thinking, man, for the Super Bowl? Look, I don't man, know, we, I, we should end with that, but I'm going to start off with that. What, what's yeah, your prediction? I, I think that I can't bet against Tom Brady, man. And – Conventional wisdom says that on paper you don't bet against Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, but I, I, I've learned that TB12, when it comes to that particular game, when you put Super Bowl in front of the game, mm-hmm. that dude shows up and shows out. And then, not to mention, he's got what I the think is a, the not only the best luck, but he's going in with quite a, a, a hand if you think of it as a as a, a hand of spades he's going in with a glock as we used to call it with his defense that's a real defense you think he has both jokers both jokers with that defense that's and a real deuce? defense how far does he, go down? does he go to both the deuces i think he's got both with that defense that defense is serious so they're favored in your mind they're favored it's not it's no no nah, i no mean on paper, to you. vegas they, has got it wrong Vegas says they're not, and Vegas never has it wrong. But I think the intangible component. But if you come out, hold on. You said Joker, Joker, for for all my uh, lightly melanated people, this is like Euchre, (laughs) but with more cards, right? So Joker, Joker, Deuce, Deuce. I mean, you start off with maybe not both deuces. Not not the both deuces. That's the fourth highest. uh, TB12 alone gives me both Jokers. And then with that front seven, I'm I'm taking one of the deuces. Uh, you know, their their back four is not as good as the front seven, pound mm-hmm. for pound. But the front seven, as you know, if that is the nucleus of your squad, then it makes the back yeah. four look better yeah. on defense. So Yeah, it makes it I'm, tough. You know, I'm and, going with Tampa Bay. Keep with the spades reference. TB's got the luck that he wins with a with the with the 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 jack every once in a while, his 10 walks every so often. Because <laughs> He has luck, man. I think, I mean, uh, I will say this. I need to publicly apologize because I've been saying it was all Belichick and it was all, uh, you know, the the team and everything there. But, boy, I don't know what happened with New England. I don't think they made it. They got, they got a high draft pick this year for the first time. And then uh, TB made it. I didn't think he was going to make it. But, you know, he did put some pieces together. So this is the first time he really had this many pieces in one spot. So we're going to see. Show- which shows at the end of the day he's going to be a GM owner or something because right. the pieces that he was able to attract to Tampa Bay was nothing short of a miraculous. Like, Tampa Bay wasn't this team last year, and no. he had a lot to do with it. People gravitated. He, he's gone Tampa. through his whole career making sacrifices, which is why he's done it. He's always sacrificed yeah. his money. I'll take my hat off to him for that. He's yeah. he's, take, he's like, I, I want to win. And if I need to take less to win, cool. I'm going to play till I'm 57, so I'm going to get my money back. My lifetime earnings, you're never going to notice I took a, it, took a haircut. Yes or no? Now that we are professional men in different industries, just quick yes or no. We've got families. We've got mortgages. We've got investments. We've got things to consider. Quick yes or no. Would you make the sacrifice as a, a player, a star player, from a contractual standpoint to have a better team? I would do it until I won a couple times, and then I got to go get paid. I would, you know – I want a Super Bowl if I have a chance. It's for your legacy and it's for everything. All that you want to try to win a Super Bowl. So I probably wouldn't do it. It'd probably be like middle half of my career, front front half. Early on in my career, probably I'm trying to get paid and try actually just try to make a team, whatever. You're trying to make sacrifices. Right, you right, right. Rich. Once you've established yourself as a rich person, you've made some money. Now you're like, okay, I'm gonna be rich. I got money right now. I got some generational wealth going on. Now I want to win a championship, which really that's an investment because you're making money. You're making money in other ways, right? You're gonna make endorsements and stuff. And you right, know, right. if Tom Brady right. doesn't win all the Super Bowls that he wins, he doesn't go down as the guy. He's going down, so he's not the marketing monster. He's not the gym. So I, yeah, maybe I would. I, I talk my myself. Short, my short it. answer is not only no, but hell no. I'm taking yeah, all my money. Yeah, chance. because legacy is so fickle, and fans they. You know, Dan Marino was undeniably the best at one point, 
Joe Montana was undeniably the best at one point. John Elway was undeniably the best at one point. Those same fans are now the biggest TB12 supporters. They're they're you know blowing the trumpet for TB12. I think legacy is something that only exists in theory. There's no real definitive connection to legacy. Whereas when it comes to money, dividends, bills, dividends, dollar dollar bills, y'all, give me the money. And but that's my how many how many how, how okay so you you, you we, we talk about like uh Hall of Fame you know Eli Manning you don't talk about him in the Hall of Fame if he doesn't win two Super Bowls right true you never he talk got about paid, him. he got he's he's on both so sides you right. got paid he got paid he got but paid. the thing about it is Tom Brady they might put him in the Hall of Fame at halftime of this Super Bowl. <laughs> They don't make him wait for his jacket. They're gonna make the exception to the They're gonna make the exception. Just let him just do it while he's still playing. He's getting old, man. He might die old. It happens to be your size and has your name on it. Just put it on. We know you're gonna get it. We know you're gonna get the jacket. So there's some endorsements. He's Tom isn't poor. Plus, he married a supermodel that makes all that money. He's cool. He's fine. She probably would have left him if he wasn't the Super Bowl champ. So he said, forget it. I'll just keep here. So we no one's feeling so the crying. These are first world problems, right? We're not worried about first world problems. So, what's your favorite storyline for the Super Bowl? Is it the old quarterback versus the young quarterback? Is it yeah, I like home? that. Okay, let's talk about that. I like that. I like that. Only because Tom Brady is my era, right? That he's my class, or I'm his class. Let me go ahead. Is that and crazy? Play. He's yeah. in your class, my class, and he's still playing. And the mere thought of being tackled and hitting the ground right now makes me hurt. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm cheering for the old guy. There's someone Anytime like I that. touch the ground with my body, I cuss. It's just a, right. it just comes out. Cuss. Straight up. That could be a old, church. It, old doesn't man matter. Cuss. it don't even sound like it could be church. I cuss. Oh bad. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna cuss now, but you know what I'm saying. When I touch the ground, it's a bad thing. I'm never interested right. in that. Yeah, no, nah, man. So and that, I'm with no it. one's on top of me when that happens. I just fall on my own accord and yeah. I'll cuss words come out, I come back up. And and go get I, ice. I dig it. I dig it. So that that's my storyline. Absolutely, the oldest quarterback to ever start in a Super Bowl versus what will be the youngest quarterback to start in two quarter. Uh, excuse me, two Super Bowls in Patrick Mahomes. This is old versus young. This is a generational battle, and I'm rocking with my generation, man. I think TB12 brings it out for all the Ben Gay, icy hot old dudes like myself. Rock it. TB12, and while I don't like him because he's a Michigan dude, like Man. you already have confronted this reality that he's got it all. This dude, relatively handsome, uber successful, is married to a freaking supermodel. He's like, got he's it all. Lucky, man. Yeah, he yeah, should, he all. should be a spades partner, man. He's lucky. That's that's the thing here. Yeah, so yeah, much. You the, 12, the, the Jack gonna walk messing with TB. So we're gonna look at you know. I like two storylines. I like. I do like the fact that TB went to TB and played a Super Bowl in TB. I think there's something about that, right? That is. Something. I like that. I that's like some. That. That. That's some interesting right there. He says like so, there's some some there's some walk off into the sunset moment type stuff there. But I know he's gonna keep playing for ten more years. But you know, I like well, a little perseverance too. The guy that persevered. And I gotta say, uh, JPP, Jason Pierre Paul. Oh yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Haitian like myself. So yes, before you point out, yes. Stop Stop say, oh yeah, no. Uh, I'm not gonna speak Creole and just and alienate some people, man. But he hurt his hand, man. You he hurt his hand, him. messing with stuff because oh, yeah. his his mom. So this is for the Haitians that are watching. So when he blew the thing off, so Haitian parents have this thing about themselves that like they want you to listen to them, and when bad things happen to you, when you didn't listen, they they celebrate it, right? So they said, stop that guy, though. So, they, so like when his hand blew up, if his mom was there, she would have said, that's what you get. That's how his parents are. Pronounce it one more time. Stop that guy, though. Right? Stop that guy, Yeah, stop that guy, though. I Which means, that with my son. That's what you get. That's what you get. I told you not to play with this, so that's what you get. I'm. That's good. That's good you blew your hand off. That's how Haitian parents are. They're crazy. I don't know what's wrong with them. They have no compassion if they've told you. If they never told you to not mess with the fireworks, even if they didn't tell you, though, they would claim that they didn't tell you. Have you but, ever told your kids that? Stop that guy, No, because I hated my mom and dad told me that. You know, yeah, I'm down there right. hurting and crying, and they're like, see, that's good. Yeah, I'm glad it hurts. I'm glad it hurts you. Yeah, good. That's good. I'm happy for you. I'm happy you bust your head. Are you really happy for that? <laughs> yes, they are. Because I told you to stop, and you kept doing it. So that's how Haitian parents are. Shout out to all the Haitian moms. Right. Out to right. Right. But he blew his hand off, came back, was a little short for a while. Yeah. 2019, he broke his neck in a car accident. Played I didn't that know year. that one. He broke his neck in a car accident. I didn't know that Broke one. his neck in a car accident. Fixed okay. his neck. His hand, if anyone wants to Google his hand, now he's a spokesperson for uh 
for uh, firework safety, broke his hand, or do all that stuff, and now going to the Pro Bowl or whatever, got voted to the Pro Bowl. They're not, they didn't have it, and in the Super Bowl. So I mean, if they win, I'm, I'm not gonna celebrate. So I'm celebrate JPP man. So he so coming out there. Somewhat, some way cheering for Tampa for very different reasons, but we're. I really, we're I, I want, actually, I want KC. I want KC to win, but I got my backup. You know, you hedge it, so that's my hedge story. I got that in my pocket. So if that happens, JPP. I have to be in that with. I'm cheering for Kansas City. That, I, you, I you still like him. I like my homes. I like my homes. I like being me. I like Re- Andy Reid's fat. I like fat people. I'm fat. I like that. I don't know. <laughs> I like it. I don't know. I like I want I want KC. I wanted to be the dice. They got so many goons over there. I like it. So I love it. You know, anyway. I'm I'm not a fan of all the people going down to Tampa Bay acting like business as usual. People are down there partying like there's not a freaking pandemic going on. They down there. I, I do like that you heard that they invited all these frontline workers. I think it's like fifteen thousand frontline yeah, workers to come down there for free. They were not they were um yeah, immunized, exactly. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That was a good story for me. I think yeah, that. I, I'm not a big feel good story guy all the time, but I like that one. But all these people coming down to Tampa Bay partying and posting pictures, like I'm like, come on, y'all. Yeah, okay. It's Florida. Florida. Just, COVID I doesn't want, exist want, in Florida. I want this to be at least somewhat past us for track season. But with with no. events like the Super Bowl and people acting like business as usual and exposing themselves to the virus. We're going to be in South. this for a while. The South does not believe in COVID. It does not, it hasn't happened. Ain't that? <laughs> it does, they don't believe in COVID. It doesn't happen. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Not, if you can't, look, you can't see not, me. You not, can't see me. Not, not, I can't hear problem. you. I can't hear you. They put right. their finger in their ears and they just don't have it COVID. Have, Somebody could die from it in their family. Yeah. He did die of COVID. He has That's something. one of the reputations about the South that I'm not proud of. Right. You gotta say it, whatever. So look, let's let's switch again. Everybody's on Super Bowl. We'll be talking about this again next week. We're supposed to be down to a minute, game. but you know we break. We'll get down a minute, man. I just want to talk real quick about this this quarterback swap. We had Matthew Stafford for two. What did he get? Two picks, uh, a pack of Newports, and some uh, Air Force Ones, and then they they gave him uh, golf. And one Back book of spades. He got one free book of spades. He got Anytime free he book. plays, Jay, his, you get his, a his eight, of, his eight of diamonds got to walk for that. <laughs> a free book, right? right. <laughs> he had a relay, two books. And, anyway, right. too much spade reference. But anyway, what, what do you think about that trade? I, I mean, there's, uh, there's so many different ways I can attack the trade. That's a lot. They gave up a lot for Matthew Stafford. They, being the Rams, gave up a lot for Matthew Stafford. But I guess the Rams figure, look, we're built to win. We were just one position away the quarterback position and Matthew Stafford um I have to admit watching the aftermath of the trade he's a tough son of a gun he is he's a he's tough a son of a gun yeah, he's a so they showed I don't you got some some doodle on your face I think you got some brown around your face doodle brown. Cleveland Browns. They showed they show they showed the uh the highlight of him versus the Cleveland Browns where he avoids several defenders, steps yeah. up and throws an amazing pass and gets completely leveled and separates his shoulder. And then they have a hot mic on him and he's getting up basically saying, What do you mean I can't come back in the game? No, I gotta keep playing. Comes back in with a separated shoulder because it's offhand and wins the game. He's like, and if you need me to throw it, put me out. You need me to throw it. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I like that. that gets I, you I right. respect that. Respect. You gotta respect that. So before I saw that, I probably would have said they spent too much on him, but you can't teach intangibles. And who doesn't want to get out of Detroit? Uh, shout out to him for getting out of it. And uh, we shall see if they spent too much being the I, Rams, I go too much. I go a few ways. So part of me sometimes think like I like to see people get emancipated and go free. Like, you know, he's been going to Detroit and they're perennial losers. They may have a halfway decent game and yeah, he's so going to go down as a quarterback. That's just like whatever. Like you said, people don't know his greatness and how things work out because he's over there. Um, some of the announcers are clowning him. They didn't really think he was really all that. They thought he was whatever. Let's go give him a chance to go see. I just want to say I hope, and I'm not even gonna try to go there too much, but you just you could just smell the reference. I hope Deshaun Watson gets the same treatment. He gets to go where he wants to go. He gets to pick it up and do what he's got to go do. Um, and I hope that works. You know, I had to say I with smell that what the rock is cooking up there, baby. Smell I smell what I'm what talking about. I hope give him chances to. People want to call the shots. Now, I had to go back to Dak Prescott. Now I'll be a sad, I'm a cowboy hater. I don't like them. I like to say bad things about them, whatever. But I, I do have feel some kind of way for Dak. Um, I don't know if I want to criticize Dak or if I want to say that he just was treated unfairly or whatever. 
I never really looked at the offers that they gave him and saw where that was in the market, to be fair to the Cowboys. Maybe he was passing up good money. But you see him breaking stuff and all that kind of stuff, and I think, man, you know, gosh, I, I, I wish I wish he could have dictated his future a little bit better. What do you think about that? He's on the ropes, honestly, and he does not have a lot of leverage. And that foot that was Figured turned to every – he does not have a lot of leverage. And, man. And, and literally, right, he, he his foot his foot being pointed in all different directions puts him in a really bad spot. But I think his teammates are saying all the right things. I saw an interview uh, with, you know, the entire receiver core has supported him. His entire team has, has supported him. Uh, but to hear – old man that owned a little stadium, how's he supporting him? Jerry Jones is a businessman. He's a businessman. So all the support that yeah. you want. So see, you hearing C.D. Lamb say things about him recently on a, an interview on the NFL Network suggests mm-hmm. that people believe in him. And, you know, there's two ways to look at what happened last year. One way to look at it at is that we got to see in living color what the Dallas Cowboys are, or rather what they're not without him. Because mm-hmm. they were horrible. Horrible without him. And with him, but yes, but they weren't as bad with him. They were in games with him. You still yeah. thought that they had You're a right. chance because That's the fair. NFC East was so bad. You thought they had a yeah. chance. Yeah. But when he went out, they were horrible. And Andy Dalton was the replacement. So it wasn't like they went to an undrafted free agent right away. They had Andy Dalton season. in the yeah. final season, right? Yeah. And one game's at Cincinnati. But there's a different level when it comes to quarterbacks. There are are there's the elite level and everybody else. And while I hate the Cowboys, just like you, I mm-hmm. think Dak Prescott, by way of his statistical performance, and if you look at qualitatively what happened last year, I think he's effectively put himself in the elite level. Healthy Dak Prescott, but it's not a healthy Dak Prescott that is negotiating the terms. So the leverage is all gone. Yeah, I feel bad for him. I hope it works out. Speedy recovery. I hope he makes a comeback and makes his bread. Last topic I want to bring back before we get out of here, man. I read this crazy little story today. LeBron James settles a lawsuit. He posts a picture of him dunking on his Facebook page and didn't didn't shout out the uh, photographer and got sued for $150,000. He tried to counter sue the dude for trying to use the pictures or whatever, but it didn't work. He got lost. Can you sue me for me posting a picture of me <laughs> on the? Isn't there something inherently wrong with that? That I can you have? I have to pay you for a picture of me. That uh, you took, uh, that you- this this is the reason why people make so many what I would call offensive attorney jokes because there's this intellectual property law that protects the photographer and. You know, from uh, uh, well, how he get the picture? Property he standpoint, picture? where he got a picture? He took your camera. He stole your camera, huh? No, he didn't steal the camera. But that's his. Is I'm not defending it. Don't make I'm me asking. defend it, Mr. I'm Attorney not man. defending it. I'm, Mr. I'm just saying, Mr. Yale I'm man. Saying, I'm no just saying, Yale yeah, man. I'm and asking it, you a question. Did he he stole the picture? He didn't steal the picture, but well, in, how, in, where was the it, picture? It, he found it out somewhere. The picture was the picture was the property of the photographer. It's the rightful property. Was there a lock and key on the property? There was no lock and key on the property, but from an intellectual property standpoint, it belongs to the photographer. I didn't make the law, but at the end of the day, that is a law. You sue me for taking a picture of me and putting it I on think, Facebook. I, I think I don't. I don't. I don't suggest that you would. I think it's a bad idea to do it, but for, legally, yes, the photographer had a legal ground to to sue him. And he right, and I'm wrong because he won, and that's why I look at see these values. But just America, man, everybody's suing everybody. They trying to pay the these trades. They play too long, hurt their ankle. They try to share pictures on Facebook, and and then they have to pay 150 thousand dollars to post a picture on Facebook. Now nah, he yeah, got well, the money. That's first world problem. That's that's what is there a world beyond the first world? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's one percent plus. He's a plus. But like his world is a whole different world, but you know. I, I don't like it because it again puts attorneys in a very bad light. But legally, he did have the grounds to sue. I don't oh, get then they were mad because he didn't show up to court. What you want to autograph now? Now you want to take a picture of that? You want to do it? So 
Anyway, my man, we went ball hawk the whole time. We give a little little big flow at the end. I'm gonna give you the, the black one, the clear one, all the different ones like that. So um multiple. Yeah, what are we talking about tomorrow? What are we talking about tomorrow on the, on Yo, the ball we got hawk the big show? flow? We got big flow from the big flow show on the ball hawk sports talk tomorrow. And you know what it is. We got a bunch of topics. We gotta talk about the Super Bowl, which will forever be referred to as the big game because of this whole intellectual property aspect of the name itself. So we're going to be talking about a lot of aspects of the big game, and it'll be a very broad application of the big game. And you know how you do, man. You're going to be spitting fire. I'm going to be spitting fire. It's going to be the Ball Hawk Sports Talk with your boy, B. Brown, ESQ, a.k.a. the Ball Hawk, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, a.k.a. Mr. Excessive Celebration in the building. Mr. Grits with Butter. Mr. Grits with Butter. So that's what it's going to be, man. It's going to be a bunch of grits and butter straight – Rough, rugged, and raw business, sports, and entertainment, how we do. You know what I'm saying? And, and luckily, we're going to have you in the building again tomorrow. Man, love being part of the family, man. So without further ado, man, we went over our 16 minutes again, but we out. All right? We-